Hey there, Tam here from Naturally Radiant. Hope you're having a beautiful day or night wherever you are watching this video in the world. So today I want to talk about fermented vegetables and kombucha because they seem to be gaining popularity and they're a bit of a trend at the moment um, and everyone seems to be jumping on the bandwagon and for good reason, fermented, fermented foods are actually really good for you. But there's a downside and I'll get to that soon. But this, this particular brand here, Peace Love and Vegetables from Byron Bay, is a brand that I personally love myself. Um, it's gluten free, rich in probiotics, it's raw, it's paleo, it's vegan, so it's all good. And then we've got kombucha as well. I don't know, have you tried kombucha? What did you think of it? Uh, feel free to reply to this, this video. Um, love to know your thoughts, what you think of it, um, what you think of fermented veggies. But anyway, getting off track a little bit there. The reason that I wanted to share this video today with you is just to educate you a little bit about fermented foods, just in case you are one of the many people suffering from a yeast infection, also known as a candida infection. So when you're suffering from a yeast infection and you're eating fermented foods such as these ones and drinking kombucha, what it could actually be doing is it could actually be making the problem worse and that's because fermented foods actually feed the candida. Candida is a type of fungus. We naturally have candida in our bodies. There's many, many different forms of candida. The one that's the most bothersome is called candida albicans. There's also one called candida tropicalis which is also bothersome but the main one that we're talking about today is albicans. So if you tend to suffer from thrush, if you get dandruff or athlete's foot, um, lots of headaches, you might have gut issues, poor concentration, moodiness, uh, arthritis, Oh gosh, there's so many symptoms from candida infection, it's not even funny. The list is so long, I couldn't even go through it in this video today. And that's why I wrote a blog about it. So if you want to know more about candida and its symptoms, and what causes candida, head over to the blog, I'll pop the link below this video, and you can learn more um, by reading the blog. But just quickly, I'll just quickly run through some of the things that can cause candida. And it's starting to rain outside. So, um, obviously, things like antibiotics can cause candida infection, and that's because they kill the, good, the goodies in our gut, like the good bacteria. So, when they're killing those good bacteria, the bad ones naturally will flourish, and bad bacteria or bad fungus like candida can tend to get out of control and cause all sorts of problems in our body and with our health and well-being. So antibiotics is one, uh, stress is another one, and because we live in such a busy, a busy world, a busy environment, more people are so stressed and time poor and rushed off their feet. Um, candida is, is quite rampant in society, and a lot of people are walking around, they don't even know that they've got it. So it might be really beneficial, just check out the blog, it's really quick read and you can find out a little bit more if you do think that you might be suffering from candida infection get yourself over to a naturopath and get tested and then you can move forward but yeah if you do think you are suffering from a yeast infection it's probably better to avoid fermented foods for the time being just until you know what you're dealing with i really hope that this video was informative for you today and i'll see you on the next video thanks for watching bye